What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Suave the Entertainer, and better watch a whole fire entertainer on dogs. So, we got part three. Y'all asked some spicy questions in this. I don't want to answer them, but I'm going to. At the same time, I, I got to answer them. Y'all asked the questions. And I'm going to be transparent. Like I said, this is all, this is an authentic vlog channel, bro. Y'all going to get what y'all going to get. So I'm going to ask all of these. I'm going to answer all these questions. Damn. Y'all got real, like, y'all got real personal with these. I ain't going to lie. But I don't care. I'm going to answer them anyway. But before we get into that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Turn your post notification bell on. Follow all my social medias in the description below. At Cam Hampton Official or Suave the Entertainer on Instagram. All my other socials, all my other channels is in the link tree in my bio. At the bottom of this video in the description, the links to the channels and social media is on that too. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, go watch them. Go 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 learn more about me. You feel me? This is a QA. You feel me? This is part three of the QA. So fuck with me if you want. So let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Uh, first question is, damn, I done lost it. Hold on. All right, first question is, what's the craziest thing you've ever done in your life? Now, that is a loaded question. Um, I'm not finna, I'm not finna answer it, but I'm gonna answer it. Craziest thing I've done in my life. All right, let me see. The craziest thing I've done in my life. Um, I don't know. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know. But, uh, your boy's been through some shit. Your boy's been through, like, trials and tribulations in life. So, I would say the craziest thing without saying too much, because I'm not finna get into it, but the craziest thing, um, I've ever done in my life would probably be, probably, uh, I'd say almost having a kid, for one. What's the craziest thing or the craziest thing that has happened to me, obviously, um, to answer the question. I would say the craziest thing, I'm trying to think, bro. Because I don't want to say nothing too crazy because it's like, I don't put my business out there, but man, fuck it. Craziest thing that I've ever done or that's ever happened to me, I'd say uh, your nigga went to jail. So I've been in jail. I've been locked up. I've been booked. Fuck it, nigga. Free to jails too, nigga. On dogs. But uh, free niggas out the feds too, nigga. But yeah, your boy's been in jail, and that's the craziest thing that's ever happened to me or I've ever done in my life. So yeah. Have you ever had a near death experience? Can you share it? A near death experience? I've had. I'm not gonna lie. I can't say I have. I've had incidents in my life like everybody else but like every other guy in their life but that like be doing shit but let me see near death experience i would say like one time in my life and that was when i was like in high school nigga, like and yeah it was a high school and late at night type shit i was walking to the crib and i just peeped something that's it I'm not finna talk too much about it, but yeah. What is the wildest party story that you've that you're comfortable sharing? The wildest party, yo. All right, I ain't gonna lie. The wildest party story I got is probably the last party I went to, and it was fucking stupid. No, not stupid, but like the party was fire as fuck. Like I actually fucked with the party itself, but. I didn't fuck with what happened at the party. Like, the party was vibey. It was bitches in there, niggas doing what, whatever they doing, niggas standing on the table. I think it was somebody's birthday or something. I went with, like, I went with one, two, I went with two of my mans from I went to high school with. And it was like a Dominican, it was a Dominican party, I believe. It was like a Dominican crib. Like, it was mad Dominicans in there. Um, obviously other races, but it, it felt like a Dominican crib in the house that was doing smoking hookah and shit. You couldn't smoke weed, but you can drink and stuff. So I felt like a Dominican crib. 
But yeah, like just to sum it up, like to fast forward a little bit, like why it was crazy is I was like, I'm laid back in parties. I'm not the type of nigga that is going to be in everybody's face, running after bitches, trying to do this and the third. I'll dance. I'm a fuck with who I know there and all that. Try to talk to people here and there. Try to talk to bitches here and there. But what blew me the whole time is obviously I, br I brought my bag in there. Um, I brought my big ass elite bag, my basketball elite bag and shit. And I had like I had a bottle in there and some other shit. And then, um, a nigga like a nigga put I put my bag down and I was just standing there. I pour I pour poured up everybody that I came with and shit with the with the Remy bottle and shit. And I was just standing. I was just standing by the wall. It was like a like a wall like a. Like, the support being that you just stand on the side of the wall that's connected to the rest of the house. And I'm just like, all right, I'm 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 vibing. I'm listening to music. I'm seeing everybody. I'm talking, blah, blah, blah. I got my niggas, like, certain, in certain areas around me that I can just, like, tap them and shit. And within the arm's reach. A couple of my female friends that was already there, they pulled up and whatever, you know? And as the party got lit or whatever, after, like, the time started passing... A person I was talking to at the time pulled up on me, and I didn't want them to pull up. But in a way, I told them to pull up so I can get a ride to the crib, which I'm not going to get too much into. Y'all can judge me however you want, but I didn't know how I was getting home. <laughs> the party was mad late. The party was in the city. Like, the party was in the city, but I didn't live in the city. I lived OT at the time, so... A nigga was going to be drunk as fuck on dogs. So I was just like, yo, I got to get to the crib. I knew my man, like, my mans didn't drive there. Like, bro, the bros didn't drive there. They probably took an Uber. I'm not going all the way to their crib just to go all the way to my crib. So I was like, let me just find some shit. I found a spot to stay at, at the after the party, but I needed to get there because I'm not walking. I'm not walking through. I'm not walking through Boston at, like, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And what's crazy is I left early too. I left early. So I got to the to the place I was gonna sleep at for the night until I left the person's house I was gonna sleep at tonight at that night. And then I was gonna leave in the morning. But the party was still going for like an hour or two after I left anyway. So I couldn't really stay. But the person I was fucking with, she came with her friend. My man's was fucking with her. Alright, cool. But the bitch I was with, I didn't really want her to be there because one, her friend came came decent type shit you feel me her friend came decent but nigga on dogs hurt like she the short day I, I called the short i was text, texting to come to basically give me the ride bitch came in sweatpants i'm like yo that blew me i just was like i bro she was dan she was dancing and shit around me and stuff and i'm just like i don't even want you to be here now because you just you look you was a hood she like she looked like a hood on dog she looked like a hood i'm just like Yo, this ain't it right now. I'm drunk, and I'm just like, I don't even care, bro. I just want to dip soon. And I wasn't liking, like, I wasn't liking the vibe, because Shorty was just like, she was being mad extra for no fucking reason. Like, she ain't never been to a party. But need, needless to say, it was just a weird, like, it was just weird after that. Like, I didn't like the, like, that was the craziest party I went to. Like, the party was lit as fuck. The floor was shaking. We, everybody was jumping down. Good music, good vibe, good Good, good female vibes in the bitch. Like bitches in there was vibing too. They was dancing and all that. Niggas was all copacetic. Niggas was cooling. But nah, this bitch blew me, bro. Like I, I was like, I don't, I don't want to be here no more. And then I, I left. Like I literally left my book. But everybody was like, damn, this nigga leaving. I just, he, he was just that. Like I had to go down there to get her, get her and her friend to come upstairs. And then come all like come all the way to where i was at stay there shorty wasn't like vibing the way i wanted her to vibe like she was just doing extra shit like with the dancing and shit i'm like bro this ain't even that like why are you doing that and then oh and then bitch tried to tell me i gotta leave uh well, when am i leaving i'm like bro i don't want to leave i'm with i'm with niggas bro i'm like i'm with niggas i'm not trying to leave right now but i'm in the back of my head i'm like i she came also to give me a ride to the crib she wasn't gonna stay the whole time so I'm just like, fuck it. This is crazy. I'm I'm going. But that's like the craziest time. Like, that's the craziest party like situation, I guess. And I'm not the party type nigga. Like, I haven't been to a party since then. Like, I don't party, nigga. Like, I don't be doing all that extra shit. But 
I will party. I'll, throw, I'll go to the club for once in a while with niggas, but I don't do that shit like every weekend. Everybody want to go to a party, drink, and shit like that. Like, nah, bro. That'd be cool. Describe your most embarrassing moment. I already told y'all. My most embarrassing moment was um, when I had to do, like, a punishment in front of my elementary, my fifth grade class, my elementary school class. What's the most adventurous place you've had intimate relations the most adventurous place, I'd say in a mall bathroom. In a mall bathroom, in a like outside in a park or in a car. Yeah, I fuck somebody like I fuck somebody in a car. Yeah, I fuck somebody in a car outside like in a park area and then in a mall bathroom. I try to do movie theater. I ain't gonna. I'm being transparent. I try to. We try to do the movie theater bathroom too, but it didn't work out. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, have you ever broken the law? What did you do? What type of question is that? <laughs> what the fuck? Have I ever broken the law? No. I am a law-abiding citizen. And yeah, that's all I have to say to that question. Okay. That is a dumb man. Whoever asked that question, bro. What's the most controversial opinion you hold? The most controversial opinion I hold. So anybody that knows who Andrew Tate is, and this pro this this video might get yellow marked just for saying um, my brother's name, but Andrew Tate, uh, interesting Tate. Those are the people I hold dear to my growth in life, and most of my successes. And um, I'm gonna keep it at that. I'm not gonna go too far into it, but those are the people I pay attention to and listen to a lot. And some of the views they have on life and women and the government and masculinity and femininity and feminist culture and the virus and all that, I stand heavily on that with them as well. Some stuff I don't, but at the same time, it makes sense. I understand. I'm perspicacious enough to understand what they say and be able to disagree a little bit, but at the same time, I understand that most of it is correct. So my most controversial opinion I hold, I would say um, most controversial opinion I hold would be um, body count matters for a woman. Body count doesn't matter for a man. Loyalty for a man, loyalty from a man or a traditional man in that sense um, is not the same as loyalty from a woman from a, from a woman to a man, um, and also um, sexual exclusivity, if that if that makes sense to y'all. Basically, not being promiscuous for a man, a man being promiscuous is not the same for a woman being promiscuous. Um, and yeah, those are the three things that those are three controversial topics I I hold. Oh, and also that. The the virus thing that happened, I'm not going to say it cause the word because I probably will get yellow marked or banned. But that virus thing, whatever, that shit was a scam. I've never gotten sick from it. I never took a vaccine. Will never take a vaccine. Never got locked in my house. Yeah, that's all I have to say. If you know, you know. Uh, tell me about your worst breakup and how you dealt with it. I'd say my worst breakup was probably when I was, nah. I've had two bad breakups. One was just in high, like the beginning of high school, like from middle school to high school, the middle school girlfriend went to another high school. I went to one. How I dealt with it. Um, I dealt with it how I had to deal with it. It was obviously emotional. What the fuck? It was obviously emotional. Um, I did cry a little bit, but 
I knew like, okay, it's fucking, it's not that deep. Like, get the fuck over. There's also a deeper mean, like, there's also a deeper, like, a deeper reason why I was, like, got emotional behind it. It was based off of the person's family. Uh, I'm not going to speak on their situation, but, yeah, I, I, we had to stop talking. Not because of their family, but we had to stop talking because of the, the school separation. But also, like, it hurt because of the stuff that the person confided in me and told me. And I was just like, damn. I was trying to be around to support you and stuff like that. That was before I, that was like, that was like freshman year. Like that was as soon as I got into high school, it was like, fuck, but you know, and then I'd say my other one would be like my, like the, the, like the ex, like the other, the other situation I was in. Um, I said in one of my other videos, I had a, like a, the craziest thing that probably would happen to me was, um, or something like that in the last video was um the pregnant a pregnancy scare or something but we had a I had a breakup with with that person um I'm not going to say names I don't really care to shout people out or say people's names and shit but I'll speak on situations but um yeah I dealt with that I didn't I'm not going to lie I didn't deal with it that good like I was a very emotional person um but at the same time like I knew like this shit wasn't just on me. It wasn't like, I wasn't being, like, I, I knew it wasn't just me. I wasn't the only cause of it, you know? So obviously when you're only the only cause of it, you try to get your point across. You try to say this, that, and that for the other person to understand and like know what they did and see what they did. Like, hey, bro, a lot of females don't really understand like they is wrong sometimes. Or they really fucked up. They lost something good or whatever you want to call it, you know? But I'm cool, like, I'm gonna be honest, I'm cool with, all, like, basically all my exes, if I'm gonna be honest, so, it's like, it's not bad blood with any of them, and if it is, they ain't tell me, so, you beefing with somebody that you ain't telling me you got beef with, but, all my exes, I fuck with, like, for real, for real, like, that ass. like, if they would've called me and be like, Cam, I need you, I need your help doing something, or, or, can you help support me with this one, like, cool, nigga, I don't care, we ain't, like, I don't got no animosity to them, but, yeah, like, the craziest breakup, and that I had to deal with, or the hardest breakup I had to deal with. That's about it. I don't know. Like, the worst. Like, it's, it wasn't really that worst. Like, it was just, like, shit everybody go through. It's typical shit. Everybody, every man has gone through at least one or two breakups that has probably been crazy. Every female's probably done gone through breakups with guys that was probably crazy, too. It's, it's, like, it's life, bro. I was a kid. Like, I was, like, that was, like, 18, 19, 20. Like, 18... 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, like, all, all them, around them years, so, it's a lesson learned, you feel me? Uh, let me see. Have you ever had a secret that you've never told anyone? Can you share it now? I'm not, I don't share secrets, I'm gonna be honest, I don't share secrets, that's and if I, I don't know if I have any, but, like, I wouldn't even, like, I wouldn't share a secret. That if anybody knows, it's a secret for a reason. I'm not gonna share like something that's like extra secret. Like, let me see. Um, what's your guilty pleasure that you wouldn't normally admit to? My guilty pleasure, I'd say my guilty pleasure would be like weed. But it's not a guilty pleasure. I've been smoking since I was like twelve. So don't smoke. If I don't, I don't think kids are watching this because cause my my thing is age for a specific age. But don't smoke, kids. It's not good. It's really not. And if you do, be at least eighteen. Do it with a family member or your parents, so you're not smoking no fucked up shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, guilty pleasure. I'd say, like, smoke weed or alcohol or something. Or, like, cigars. I like cigars. It boosts your testosterone levels. So, I don't know. Or guilty pleasure, junk food. But I don't eat junk food. Like, I haven't eaten junk food or fast food in years. So, I don't really have guilty pleasures like that. Aside from, like, recreational stuff. What's your favorite fantasy or role-playing scenario? Wow. Um, fantasy, I'd say, like, 
school teacher type shit or like on some lingerie shit like or um uh like a lady cop or something and like a, like a prisoner or something like that i guess that's like basic Have you ever had a romantic encounter a romantic encounter with a celebrity or someone famous? I'm going to define celebrity though. Like mainstream celebrity? All right, so mainstream celebrity? No. But I'm trying to see. Some like celebrity no, but someone Famous with clout, like with a lot of followers, with like motion for real. I say yes, but I'm not going to say who, obviously. But yeah. No to like main celebrities and shit, like celebrity celebrities or whatever you want to call it. But like someone famous, yeah. Describe your most unforgettable one night stand. So my most unforgettable one night stand um if i'm gonna be a hundred i'm gonna be honest my most unforgettable one night stand would probably be damn do i have I ever had one i don't know like i feel like i haven't had a one night stand because uh, because mainly, like, anybody I fucked with, it was, like, more, like, it was just, like, we'd actually do more stuff more than just, like, one night stand, you know? But one night stand, I would say, like, somebody's BM or something like that, like, crazy one night stand, just, we did something, and then that was it. Or, like, Yeah, somebody's BM, I like the craziest, like, most unforgettable. Yeah, somebody's BM, I guess. What is the kinkiest thing you've ever tried in the bedroom? I'm not that wild in the bedroom, but kinkiest, I'd say, like, baby oil or something, like oil in the shorty's body up, giving her a massage a little bit while... Like doing it, like while wow, having sex. That's the kinkiest, I guess. Tell us about a time you got caught doing something naughty and how you got out of it. We'll say naughty as in, because I feel like naughty is like a sexual question again. Um, Well, I got caught having sex before by my mom. So that's, I don't know. Have you ever had a crush on someone you shouldn't have? Who was it? Have I had a, I've had a crush on people that I shouldn't have, I guess you could say. Like, I've never had a crush on, like, one of my man's females or, like, a, like a bro's girl or nothing. I never had a crush on them. Like, obviously, I acknowledge, like, my bro got a bad bitch or... A, 10, uh, 8 out of 10 or whatever, but no, I never had a crush on somebody I shouldn't have. Like, it's, it's a crush, bro. I, like, I'm single now and I got a crush on somebody and like, it's cool. Uh, let me see. I lost my place. Um, where is it? All right. What's your wildest sexual fantasy that you haven't fulfilled yet? Um, my wildest sex fantasy, I'd say having sex on a plane I haven't fulfilled yet. Um, like I said, I want to travel a lot, so I'm not gonna lie, that is gonna happen. Want, like, it's gonna happen eventually, but soon, hopefully. My wildest sex thing, I'd say, yeah, that probably having like sex on like a on the beach like on vacation like out of, out of the country or something that's the wildest thing um describe your most intense romantic relationship and what made it passion it's so passionate 
I guess my most romantic relationship was probably like in middle school. Cause it was like a like that was like my first not my first love, but like somebody I was like I was in love with and she was in love with me, so it was like the romance stuff was crazy. Like we really knew each other, like the back of each other's hand, like and she also met like my family members. Or it, my like she met my mom and somebody else in my family, so it was like, eh. And then uh yeah. Um, have you ever had a relationship with a significant age gap? How did it impact the relationship? Now, this is going to sound crazy, but yes, I have had a relationship with someone with a significant age gap. Not going to say who it is. I'm not going to put them on blast because they do have a name and they have their own situation now. And they are like very, very famous now well they will always were because they were older than me at the time but like i didn't realize who i was talking to and i still i don't know i'm not gonna get too deep into it but it it impacted the relationship like not really but it did because i was gullible i didn't understand certain shit so yeah that's about it Tell us about a time when jealousy or competition played a significant role in your romantic life. I was, everybody's always been jealous. I'm not a jealous person anymore. It's just like, if you do some dumb shit trying to make me jealous, then like, a woman should know not, like certain shit not to do if you got a man. So it's self-explanatory. Um, I don't see myself as, I see myself as competition because it's, it's man versus man. Like the same like the same bitch I want, another man want the same bitch. The same car I want, another man want that same car. The same amount of money I want, this another nigga want that money too. So I know there's competition at, like for men everywhere. It's it's competitive, like period. But when it comes to romantic, like a significant role and stuff, played tell us about a time when jealousy or competition played a significant role in your romantic life. Um, I'd say, like, catching somebody cheating, like, it's like, you get jealous, you get upset, that's about it. I don't really, like, you know, I don't really care for that, like, if the woman I'm with, I, sh I'm, I shouldn't feel jealous, and I'm not the type of person that ba bases shit off emotions, I base it off traditional values, morals, principles, respect, love and chastity all that shit based off of like the female who i'm fucking with and like mas uh, masculine feminine um her roles as a woman my role as a man and vice versa you know but yeah all that all that shit is out man that's stupid that's childish shit. i ain't gonna lie and plus i, I like i ain't gonna lie i'm not finna like act like i'm the best nigga in the world because there's always somebody that's above me like i'm not at the top one percent ten percent of the men yet so i know for a fact there's some guys out there better than me but like for me i know i got a lot of shit to do but i know i'm ahead of a lot of niggas my age regardless of regardless of any situation like i know like when it comes to me like if we put me up against certain people like they're gonna be like nah i won't go against cam bro i won't go against suave that nigga he he gonna go all out he ain't gonna really apply pressure he gonna do this he gonna do that like I'm not ready to bring that to the table, and I'm ready to bring certain shit to the table that niggas is not doing, so. Like, competition played in a significant role. Fuck that shit. That's, that's old. If anything, that's old. Like, that'd be like the old me or something. And I'd be like, yeah, that shit always played a part in something, but nah. I don't fuck. I don't. Nah. Just no to that question. <laughs> Just No. But yeah, y'all, that's the end of, those are all the questions for this video, y'all. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed. If y'all got more questions, DM me or put them in the comments. I'll make another video if you guys got want more questions, want me to ask, uh, answer more stuff that y'all got to ask me. But yeah, those are some spicy questions. Those are some deep questions. Y'all really made me think about the way I'm answering them because I'm not a social media person. I don't, like, put my, like, certain business out there and shit, so... I ain't finna, you know, I ain't finna do too much, you know, but I fuck with all the questions y'all asked me. I told y'all I was going to answer them, but that's it for part three Q&A.
Suave. Got all y'all questions out for this video, y'all. I got one more. I'm going to get all y'all questions out the way. I'm going to do more Q&As like this, you know. But if you haven't watched the other ones, go watch them. Like, comment, subscribe. Turn your post notifications on to my so you can get notified every time I post. Um, subscribe to all of my other channels in the description box and the about page on this on this channel. Um, and follow my Instagram, follow my Twitter, follow my TikTok. Um, the link is in the description. Suave, the entertainer, or um, Cam Hampton official on IG, y'all. Other than that, y'all, it's your boy Suave the Entertainer. Better watch Whole Fly Entertainer on dogs, nigga. Because she going to go. I'm playing. <laughs> I ain't playing. But, yeah, y'all, that's it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Tap in with me. Suave out.